Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to make rays visible using parts in Roblox Studio. This is a lot more complex than it seems, so I hope you guys enjoy. If you haven't seen my last ray casting video, make sure to check it out. It just goes over the intros of ray casting, and in this video, we'll just be showing all of our rays. And this is good for stuff like debugging and making like laser guns or any guns, just to show you where your rays are going. So let's get right into it. So I have myself right here a part with a simple surface GUI and text label in it that shows you where the front face is. Because in my example, we will be making a ray going from the front face to 10 studs ahead of it. And this is just an example. You can use these, these functions that we will soon be writing in any ray that you ever use. So I'm gonna go into my part and create a script. And so we're first just gonna do the basic ray stuff. So I'm gonna get the part. Part will be equal to script.parent. And then I'm going to define the origin which will be the part.position. And then the direction will be equal to the part.cframe dot look vector times 10. So now we can just define the ray. And the ray will be equal to ray.new, the origin and the direction. There we go. So we run this, nothing happens. There is a ray going from the center of the part two ten studs ahead but you can't see it and that's what we need to do but before we actually start writing code we first need to explain it so i'm here in paint 3d and let's think about this so i have a ray let's just say this is a start point and here is our ray and we have a part this will be our part a part is positioned by its center point right here so you may be thinking oh why can't we just set the origin or the position of the part to the origin of the ray so if we were to do that the part would be positioned somewhere around here like to our ray and if we wanted to resize the part to fit the length of the array of the ray it would resize it in both directions and so the ray sorry the part would be offset like backwards so in this direction so instead what we need to do is we need to here's a new ray we need to take the origin and then make it look like we're like trying to make another ray but we only go halfway so if you think about this let's just say this is a halfway point our ray has its origin and the direction. And so you could theoretically make another ray that is exactly half the size of this ray by getting an origin, the same origin, and the direction divided by two, the direction vector divided by two. And so this would be your ray. And we actually don't need to make another ray, but once we have this midpoint, we can position our part around this midpoint because our part deals with midpoints because you can make a part here and then you could get the length of the array which is just the magnitude of the direction as I explained in the first ray video and you could just resize the parts to the length and that would be pretty easy so basically all we need to do the hardest part of this whole thing is getting the central point in the ray we need to get the midpoint of the ray so Let's go back into Roblox Studio and do exactly that. So I'm back in Roblox Studio. And now that we know how we want to make our ray visible with a part, let's do it. So I'm first going to define a function. And that's going to be make ray visible. And it's going to take and run parameter the ray that we want to make visible. So the first thing we're going to define is the midpoint of our ray. And this will be the position of the part when we do that. So local midpoint will be equal to the ray dot origin plus the ray dot direction divided by two. So as I said in paint 3D, we can get the midpoint by just simply taking the origin and then taking the direction and dividing it by two because this will create 
a vector that goes from the center of the ray to halfway because we divided it by two. And that's the hardest part done. This is all you need for your ray and your part in your ray. But now we have to make the part. So local part equals instance dot new part. Wrong thing. I press enter on the wrong thing. Whoops. So part. There we go. And our part dot parent will be the workspace. This is just so we can see it. And then these are the necessary to like to make the part actually work. So these are needed. And these are the um, properties that will change. So the part should be anchored. So part anchored equal true. And then this is an interesting part. This is where the part actually gets positioned. So part dot C frame equals C frame dot new. And so there are many ways you can create a new C frame. You can just put three numbers. You can put a bunch of numbers. But the way that we're going to use here, it's actually deprecated, which basically means it's old, but it still works and it's a very simple C frame constructor. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in two values, the midpoint and the ray.origin. So what this will do is it will position our part. The part.position will be equal to the midpoint vector three and it will point the parts front face will point towards the ray dot origin so this will orient it properly we already positioned it properly and the orientation is pretty easy we just point it towards the origin and that's about it but now we need to add the size to our part because we need it to look proper with our ray so up here, at the very top, I'm going to define a radius, local radius. This will be just be the radius of our part. I'm just going to put it to 1. So the first two values of our vector 3 will just be radius because when we are making our part, only one of the vector 3s, or one of the values, I should say, should be different than the others because we want like a line, and a line doesn't have like a different width and length. So... The one thing we need to change, though, is the Z component. And the Z component will just be equal to the ray dot direction dot magnitude. And this, essentially, is just the length of our ray. So, now that we have the needed things done, we can do, like, the other things. This will just be for aesthetics, just showy stuff. So, let's just set the part dot material to enum dot material dot neon part dot brick color to brick color dot new let's just say red there we go and there you go and you know just just so you can have it we can just return the part we're not going to use it but it could be useful later and so now that we have our make ray visible function done we can simply call it with our ray so we can do make ray visible and just send in our ray that we created. So if I run this, you can see that from the front face, we have a big part, not very big, but a part that goes from the inside all the way to 10 studs ahead of it. So just to show you that this just isn't a one-time use, we can, let's say, rotate it this way and then rotate it that way. There we go, front face is facing up there. If we run this, you can see it's right here. And you may notice it's oriented a little bit weirdly, but you can probably fix that pretty easily. And there you go. And so no matter where I rotate this part, sometimes the rotations get a little bit weird. Let's just say right there. You can see it faces properly. And since we are using the C-frame, to point the C-frame towards the front face of the part. The orientation of the part is kind of independent of the orientation of the part that's sending it. You could obviously change that if you wanted to, but for my purposes, it suits me just fine. So you can change this up, do whatever you want. And the primary uses for a system like this is for debugging and lasers. So in one of my games, I had a laser and I used ray casting to detect if there were players there, and I killed them if they were. So, you could use a system like this just to project the laser as a part so the players know like when they've been killed and whatever. Or, if you just want to figure out what where your ray actually is and where it's going, then you can just use this to debug. But whatever you use it for, 
It's a super useful, super simple system. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to comment any questions down below because this is getting into some more nuanced areas of C-frames and Vector 3s. But make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And comment any more raycasting videos you want me to make. And I hope you guys have a nice day. And goodbye.